LGBT concepts uh, the love, the development are able to explain a lot of uh, phenomena that are usually labeled as mystical or paranormal and left aside or totally avoided by regular objective science. Uh, one of them that seems to be of great interest in Brazil uh, is the possibility of cure and remission of diseases. This does not uh, impede the continuous increase of popularity of the alternate, alternative or energetic medicine, placebo effect, acupuncture, Reiki, Qigong, and the various others. Uh, these results speaks, the results speaks for themselves uh, to, to, to the many people that had success using them, okay? Uh, could you shed some light in how this process works how can it be done or not done and what facilitates or complicates it uh, okay. a little bit okay but we cannot yes, this is a, yeah this is a real this is a real thing you know using your mind to heal is a is a real thing that's not an imaginary thing or or a you know a foolish thing you can use your mind to do all sorts of things once you understand that you are consciousness there's a, a wide selection of various things that you can do once you understand what it means to be conscious, and once you evolve that quality of your consciousness, um, more and more things become available to you to do. Um, well, one of the things is healing. You can use your intent to heal. It's your intention. And it would take us a few hours to uh, you know, derive why this works and, and uh, you know, all the details of it, but we'll just kind of cut to the chase and say that your intent, your consciousness, your intent modifies the future probability of this virtual reality. So this virtual reality, this place we live, this physical universe that is really a computed virtual reality has a probable future all the things that could possibly happen and the probability that they might happen. Okay. Now some of those probabilities that they might happen are going to be extremely small, you know, and some of them will be close to one. So there's lots of possibilities and each one has a probability. What you can do with your intent is modify those prob those probabilities. So you can make something more or less likely, to be rendered in the future, more or less likely to happen in the future. Now that sounds just kind of strange and, and there is a lot of explanation behind that that shows how this works and why it works and why it has to work that way and it couldn't be any way else. But think of it in terms of feedback for ourselves. We help create the world in which we live. This world is, is in three different ways. This world is created by us this virtual world, not entirely created by us, just in these three ways. One way is our intent modifies the future probability. So if our intentions are very positive and loving and caring, we will tend to create a more loving and caring and cooperative world. If our intentions are very self-centered and, and full of fear and ugliness and greed and hate, we will tend to create a world that's more full of fear and greed and hate. You see, so because we modify future probability with our intent, that intent doesn't have to be an intellectual intent. That intent comes out of our being level. So if we just happen to be positive people, then we tend to have a more positive life. If we happen to be very negative people, you know, people who complain all the time, say people who are always, you know, arguing and always fussing and never happy about anything, those kind of people tend to have more difficult lives. They tend to have poorer health. They tend to have bad luck. You know, that sort of thing is partially created out of our own intent. That way, our reality represents us. We get to make it in that way. Now, you can't make anything happen anytime you want. You know, let's say you use your intent to change the probability. If that probability was one in a million, and you are quite the, the wizard at changing uh, probability and you make it go all the way to, you know, one in 500, 
well, okay, you're really strong. You've changed a lot of probability, but it still isn't likely to happen. It's only one in 500, you see. So some things are a lot harder to do than others. And it requires several things of the individual. It requires that your intent is focused. It requires that your intent has low noise. It's not noisy intent. It's a clear intent. And it requires that your intent comes from your being level, from the core of you, not from your intellect. Those are the three things that make your intent powerful. If it's from the intellect, well, that's just making a wish. And as we all know, we've thrown pennies into wishing wells and it doesn't really work very well. Making a wish is not very strong. It does have a little bit of power in it, but it's not really very strong. So those three things, those three variables are important, but then there's lots of us here. So there may be a certain number of people who really want it to rain because, you know, their crops are dry. But there's a bunch of other people who are going to have a picnic who really want it not to rain. So you will have these intents pushing and pulling in different directions, sometimes opposite directions. And what comes out is kind of the average of all that pushing and pulling of all of the intents that modifies the probability doesn't necessarily make it happen or keep it from happening. It just modifies the probability of it happening. Okay, so that is one way that we can heal. We use our intent to make a future state more healthy. My intent is that, you know, tomorrow your stomach will stop aching. Well, if I have a strong, clear, focused, being level intent, then I have a, some, some ability to make that stomach stop hurting. Okay, now we say that's healing. Okay, what we're doing, this is a virtual reality. The virtual reality is all rendered. What we're doing is changing the way the system renders the reality, you see. So that is the way it works, and that's a feedback for us because we can look at this world, you know, turn your TV on tonight and watch the news and see how depressing it is, you know, <laughs> see all the, the nastiness, you know, all the greed, all the, you know, the violence, all the unpleasant negative stuff going on out there in this, in this world and realize that that's us. That's the level at which we exist. Our level of quality of consciousness enables a world like that to exist. So it's, you know, if you wonder where we are as a human race, well, just look at the news and that'll show you where we are. We're not anywhere close to being, uh, you know, unconditional love. We're a long way from that. We've got a lot of evolving to do to get there. So that's, that's the thing about healing. And all of the different modalities that there are for healing, you know, uh, you mentioned Reiki, Qigong, uh, they go on and on and on and on. If you, if you look at, at uh, you know, every day there is a new one. Yeah, if you, if you look at psychic healing, you have a list of, you know, 100 or 200 different methodologies. Mm -hmm. All of them have just one active ingredient, and that is intent. But they all have different ways of helping you focus that intent. They all have their own process of getting you to focus that intent with clarity, with intensity, and from the being level. So that's what all the modalities are about. This intention doesn't have, you know, doesn't require, you know, hands on, it doesn't require you to touch it. It can happen a million miles away. You know, this is, we're talking about consciousness here, you know, space doesn't, doesn't affect it. So that's the difference. Yes, lots of different things, but they all have their own modalities and you can modify future probability if you, I've seen a guy doing the Qui Gong and he starts a little fire, you know, he gets his mm -hmm, hand and mm -hmm. he pushes it out and a little flame pops up. Well, he's changed the future probability. He changed the probability from that little piece of paper just lying there as a piece of paper to a little piece of paper being on fire. He's modified that future probability. And a virtual piece of paper also. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, so he does that by modifying future probability. Yeah. Yeah. So all of these things uh, that you mentioned are all just different ways of helping people, different ways of helping you focus your intent to be noise-free, to be, you know, well-focused, clear, and from the being level. 
And that's the difference between them. But all of them really work the same way. Could, could I say that it depends mainly on, on two factors there too? The person who needs it and the person who is helping the, the first yes, one. Okay. That's that, true. That, that person has an ability that is, is trying to heal and has uh, some, uh, the person has some confidence on that one and uh, also uh, is putting, uh, okay, so one is helping the other, but I, I believe uh, uh, maybe it's even more important the one that's being healed. Huh? But, it's important uh, for both of them. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes it's not a good idea to heal someone with your mind. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you need to just let it alone. Sometimes that process of illness is part of their growth path, part of their understanding. They're going to learn from that process and you just leave it alone. Yeah. And if you do heal somebody who really needs that illness for their growth, they'll just put it right back. Yeah. And if you yeah. take it away again, they'll put it back again. And if you take it away again, they'll get something else. Yeah. They won't have that illness anymore. Something else will happen. So that person has, you know, if you're the person being healed, you have more to say over what's going on in your body than somebody outside does. If you need that illness, now people, nobody thinks they need an illness in their intellect. We're not talking about intellect, we're talking about being level. We're talking about people, let's say, who uh, are very negative, who are always complaining and always fussing and always in arg arguments and they're always unhappy. Those people tend to create illnesses, that negativity begins to modify their body in a way that's dysfunctional. And that's what illness is. So that may be part of their lesson to learn to stop doing that is that illness that they have. They've created it, you see. So taking that away from them is not necessarily a good thing to do. So yes, you have to be a little careful with, with what you do and how you do it and understand the person and why do they have that illness? And do they agree that you should heal them and so on. You know, it's not a, it's not just a simple process. And like I say, sometimes it works better than others because sometimes you're overcoming just a little bit of probability and other times you are overcoming a huge amount of probability. Some people are more able to work from their being level and others are trapped in their intellects and they just can't seem to get down to that intuitive space where it's required to work with. So there's lots of variables in why it works better for some people than others. But in general, you can train yourself. And actually healing with your mind is one of the easiest things to learn to do. Of all the paranormal things, healing with your mind is the simplest because there's so much uncertainty with our biology. Therefore, there's room to maneuver in the probability space because of the uncertainty. You see, if something is a million to one, well, there's a, not much uncertainty in that. <laughs> you know, it's not likely to get that one, you know, if it's a million to one, so it's pretty certain what's gonna happen. So where there's lots of uncertainty, it's easier to use your mind to fix things. So you can't fix everything. You can't fix everybody. You shouldn't fix everybody. And, you know, it's, um, it's a, it's a skill that anybody can learn to do. I'd say that if, if, if you had a, you know, you can look at some of my workshops and at the end of those workshops, I explain to people how to use their minds to heal. If you looked at some of those workshops, they're all free on YouTube. And you look at that, if you practiced it, say daily for three months, I'd say you'd get pretty good about it. Good with it. Good enough to notice the difference. It's just not that hard to do. So anybody can do it. It's, it's because we have consciousness that we can do it. Some people get really good at it. Some people never get very good at it because they can't get to that low noise, you know, focused being level space. So those who have been working on it for 20 or 30 years, they're, they're much more powerful because they've learned how to do it just right to get in the right spaces to be clear. Um, those that you know have don't do it very well well they just need to practice but everybody can do it and uh, i would say then that the different healer uh, technique is a kind of a different metaphor he's used to to help the people and then but uh, the intention or the intent is what drives the the, yes. the cure there and then also the 
the person who is being uh, healed uh, is interfering the process. But anyway, yeah. uh, uh, I, I, what, what uh, my understanding is, is that the, the theory supports fully this. And then yes. the, the fun, funny or not so funny thing about it is that <laughs> reality is very democratic. <laughs> I, I used to say, when, when you, are, you said that it's easier to, to work on yourself it's it's because you don't have too much interference from the outside. You, you have only your own interference. That's not necessarily good, but on your own. And then we are trying to do something outside of you. You are competing with everyone else involved. Yeah? That's true. And then it becomes really democratic <laughs> because it's not the only be your your own intent that's going to deal with that. Yeah? Right. It's the sum of all those intents. Yeah. Okay. Some of them are pushing, some of them are pulling, and uh, which way it moves just depends on where the most power is. That, and it's that, always changing. You that, know. That reality is democratic it doesn't mean yeah. it's going to go in your favor. <laughs> that is correct. It's be the sum of the intents. Huh? That's why we, we are where we are. Okay? We, we, yeah. we may help, we have to help, we will adapt uh, as much as possible, but uh, one, uh, doing, trying to, to change the world is one thing, uh, it's a difficult thing because it, 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 everyone is, is having some intent and you have the sum, the, the, the whole vector that is pointing the direction, eh? some way. Yeah, okay. well that's why we are the way we are, it's our intent, it's what creates this, this reality. So that's one of the ways that we create a reality. The other two are by our interpretation, yes. that's the second one. We create our reality by our own interpreta interpretation of the data we get. We're a consciousness, we get a data stream. That data stream, we interpret it to be our reality. Okay, just like when you're playing your, your elf in World of Warcraft, you get a data stream, that data stream lights up a million pixels on your screen and you interpret those million dots to be that reality, that virtual reality. Well, we're like that. We get a data stream from the server that defines, you know, what's there. Now we interpret it to be what we think is there. We interpret it based on our fear, on our ego, on our beliefs, all that stuff. We interpret it. Yes. Yeah, so we filter that information and that is our reality. You see, so each one of us lives in our own reality. We share parts of the reality. It's a multiplayer game. So we share the environment and so on, and we can agree with that, but our reality is personal. It's not that there is this objective reality out there and we're playing in it. The reality is how we interpret the data. So that's the second way. You can interpret data always negatively. If you're one of those, oh, woe well, is me, full of self-pity things, everything that happens, uh, it's a terrible thing. It's no good, you see. Or you can interpret your reality as being a challenge, a wonderful challenge that helps you grow up and helps you see bigger pictures. And now everything is a good a happy thing. So depending on how you interpret that data, your reality changes immensely. So that's the second way we create our own reality. And the third way is with our behavior. If we behave uh, very nicely and caringly and cooperatively with other people, well, other people will tend to like us. Other people will tend to help us out when we need help as well. You know, we create positive relationships. But if we're all about ourselves, we're self-centered, you know, we have we have this fear, this ego, these beliefs, then people run amok of us. They, they snag on our beliefs. They snag on our, our ego and we snag on their ego. And there's always this struggle and, and uh, going on with people. So if depending on how you act, let's say if you act in a way where, where uh, you see relationships is what's in it for me. You just use people. You know, you don't have a relationship for, for anybody for anything except what you get out of it. Well, if you're a user of people, people won't like you. They won't be your friend. They won't come help you out. You're on your own, Buster. And you'll find that the life is empty and it's sterile and you're not a very happy person. Well, so that's another way that we modify our own reality by our behavior, by our interpretation and by our intent. Three ways that we create our reality. But there's all those other people in our game that are also creating reality. And it's together is what we end up manifesting. It's the sum you know, of, of all of that is what actually really, really happens. 
And there's a rule set. The virtual reality runs on a rule set, so it has to follow the rules. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's say like the, the, the laws of physics. Eh? We cannot yeah, fly like, because the, the attraction of the gravity, and that's right. part of the law of the environment. Of the part of the rule set, yes. Okay. Okay, and the, this, as you said, the, fi the, the, the filters that we have, is like the, the lens of our glasses, okay? We just see what we are able to see. And I believe, I understand, that maybe this is a lot related to the quality of the being we, we have right now, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, the more we develop ourselves as being, we, the, 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 probably the most we can see of the real opportunities that are out there. Exactly. Okay, that, that's another, let's say, advantage of, of working on yourself, of improving your quality of being. Eh? Yeah, absolutely. The more you grow up, the more you uh, lower your entropy or increase the quality of your consciousness, the clearer those glasses become to where you see what's actually there rather than your interpretation and your fear and your beliefs clouding it. So the clearer your vision is and the larger your decision space is. That means yes. the more information you have access to, you not only have the normal physical information that you have access to, but you got a lot of other information that you also have access to all the time. So by growing up, you, you increase the quality of your existence, you increase the size of your reality, and you make your reality happen all around you such that it's nice, it's fun, it's, um, you know, it, it's, it, you find the world a lovely place to be rather than in this nasty world where you're always looking over your shoulder and nothing ever works out right. And everybody's trying to take advantage of you. It's, yes, you're in the same world. You're there with all those other people, but you see it entirely differently and you process it entirely differently. And you, you, uh, you know, in one way you you struggle in the soup, and the other way you kind of transcend it. You are still a part of it. You still embrace it, but it's not personal, and you can enjoy your your time here. Let's say nothing is personal, and everything is an opportunity for learning if exactly. well used. Yes, okay. exactly. Yeah, and in a in a sense. We, we are the center of our own universe, each one of us. And not in a bad way, I mean, eh? but uh, with all this interpretation and everything. We, we are in our, at the last, uh, the ultimate position we are is in our own consciousness. Eh? Yeah, we are consciousness, and that is kind of our identity. We also are part of the larger conscious system. Yeah. We're just a piece of that system. So we are a part of it and our our evolution is its evolution because we're we're pieces and parts of it you know we're independent in the sense that we have our own consciousness and our own set of experiences and our own filters you know our own way of looking at reality our own uh, intent and noise and focus or lack of it and we have all of that which is very individual but at the same time we're just a piece of the whole so we are we are at one with the whole and we are individual, both, at the same time. And one important conclusion there is that we uh, contribute as we improve to the improvement of the whole somehow, but uh, individually we do not affect each other. Okay, we have our path to to in, to improve is an individual path, but at the same time we contribute to the whole. Yeah? Yes, we contribute to the whole because we're a part of it. And we challenge others. You know, we do of affect course. others in the sense that we challenge others. Others have to deal with us, yeah. you know, and... Um, in good and bad ways. <laughs> yes, in good and bad ways, right. Others have to deal with us. So we're part of, of their challenge. They're part of our challenge. We have to deal with them. So mm -hmm. we're interactive in that sense. But everybody has to make their own choices. Nobody can make your choice. If you get angry, you don't blame that. You shouldn't blame that on so-and-so makes me angry. You have to take responsibility. I choose to be angry. I could choose other than being angry. I could not have my ego wrapped around this. If I didn't have that fear, I wouldn't have to be angry. You see, so it's, you have to take responsibility for yourself and for your feelings and for your emotions and your beliefs and all of that. 
So yes, it's a, only you can make your choices and your free will is, is sacred. Your free will will never be abrogated. You, you are allowed to make terrible decisions. <laughs> you know, that's fine. You can do that. And you're allowed to make wonderful decisions and it's just your choice. You and are allowed, nobody, allowed to make the decisions, but you have to, to be responsible for, for the right. impacts of it. Eh? Exactly. You make the decisions, the choices, and you get the consequences. Yeah, the consequences. That's the and word. The consequences are that stuff that you learn from. If those consequences <laughs> hurt, then you need to start making different choices. If those consequences feel good and happy, then you're making good choices. Okay. Okay. I'm looking forward to seeing Brazil and uh, having some fun and meeting a lot of great people there. Mm -hmm.